So I'm not still sure what I'm going to call this series. 100% certain that I want to bring on interesting HR people to this channel and talk with them on very tangible, practical, and perhaps sometimes also a bit more philosophical questions around HR. And I asked my LinkedIn network for interesting people and the first one that sort of popped out was Penilla Raneus. She's head of people, Internet of Things, Ericsson. And I hope that I got that right now. Head of people, Internet of Things, Ericsson. Yeah, that should be right. So without further ado, let's dive into that interview. Who are you? I wish I knew actually, but <laughs> I'm I'm living in Stockholm. I live in Dandred with my husband and and I have two grown up daughters that have moved left home. I can spend all my time to work. Currently, I'm working in Ericsson as head of people for IoT. It's a sort of an acceleration unit or a startup unit within Ericsson. We have a business area that lots of these sort of next big thing for Ericsson. Well, IoT is one, of course, together. Other interesting things. So that's what I'm, who I am and what I'm doing. Looking at your CV, it's obvious that you pivoted from being more of a, almost call it like traditional business person into working with HR. So why HR? You're right. I have 20 years of background in the IT consultancy business as a consultant myself, and but most of the time as a business manager. That was super fun. But when I did some soul searching, I really found at the time, some seven, eight years ago, that really working with organizational development, leadership development, talent development was really what I, that, that where I get my energy. So I, I thought, okay, where can I do that full time in HR? Yes. And I moved into an uh, HR role within the IT industry and IT consultancy business. So coming from the background where I know that business inside out, moving into HR has helped me a lot. Head of people, uh, Internet of Things, Ericsson. What does a head of people of Internet of Things, what does a person like that do on an everyday basis? It's a lot about, I'm, I'm involved in all the processes and I think that's why I think it's so fun because I, I work with what the organization should look like, how we set it up to work efficiently and smoothly, but mainly that we get the right people in that could really contribute with skills and talents and experience, that we have good leadership, Many of the general things that people and organizations do, but I think that I have the advantage of having been in a business leading role, so I could also support and, and coach the managers on other, other stuff as well. What's on your table at the moment? At the moment, uh, Q1, performance reviews of 2020, closing 2020, going into goal setting and planning for 2021, annual salary reviews, lots of things like that. Skill development is top of our agenda. So planning for how to develop and reskilling and upskilling our people is, uh, is key. Speaking of reskilling and upskilling, do you have any practical tips and tricks for people who are might facing the same challenge like when it comes to upskilling and reskilling because we talk a lot of upskilling and reskilling you can't almost even open a hr blog or hr magazine not to read about something about reskilling and upskilling but how do you practically handle that do you have any tools or tricks up your sleeve when you need to transform and change you need a, a very detailed plan things will not happen by itself so really Making sure, and what I've done, what I've done together with learning and talent management organization in Ericsson is to do the the gap analysis. What do we have? And what do we need for the future? Making that plan detailed. What do we need on sort of unit level? What do we need on organizational level? And then taking advantage of being in a company with a hundred thousand people with lots of resources in this and then make a plan and execute on that who should be in which training and it's the only way of whatever question you're working with that's the only way of doing it being very structured and just move move the needle a little bit every day and what are some challenges that you're facing right now what's the most challenging part of, of your job actually time getting having enough time not for me i would love some more time as well in an organization and especially a part of the organization and with this product that we're working on you need to be super fast now the the the, the world is moving within the iot sphere so you need to go to market very quickly with relevant products that requires that people they are super busy and getting then coming and saying oh now we're going to do a talent review and uh uh, upskilling reskilling program what 
but you should learn to be relevant in two, three years. And they say, come back in a couple of months when I have more time. So time is of essence, uh, of course, but we cannot wait. So we are just, of course, we're moving ahead with the organization, but time. But that's an interesting aspect also, because I think that's a resource. It's the same for everyone. That like time is the only thing we share. We all have mm. 24 hours a day. So a lot of people can relate to that. And as you say, also, organizations might tend to say, oh, but we don't have time right now, but we have, we'll have time later. But will they really? Do you have any sort of what's worked best in, in your opinion on how to make the organization take the same perspective as you might take uh, when it comes to reskilling and upskilling? How do you get them to see the things you need them to see? I think lots of it is is actually collective learning. Uh, so what do we need to do together as a team? Because when you work together uh, as a team and when you move together as a team, it's much easier to do it together and you have to incorporate it in your day-to-day job. So what do I need to learn? So if it's, for example, we are, of course, focusing a lot of AI and, and machine learning as any other organization, but you have to build that into what you're doing today and learn as you go along and to do it together with your peers and, and your colleagues. And we have worked a lot of, of how to, you know, agile works ways of working sounds old. It's never old. You will always develop and refine that. And so we have built in, okay, this the skills needed and the skill uh, reskilling and upskilling needed in that sort of sense. So um, going as a team, I think makes total sense. So thanks mm. for the great uh, tips. But what is the what what's the e- easiest part of being uh, head of people at Internet of Things at Ericsson? Then? The easiest part is actually, and and I thank my the people organization in Ericsson for that, is that we are we are seen as a valued partner to the business are included i am included in all the conversations on the business when we're doing business plans financial plans whatever we are doing and in all discussions related to to the business i am have a, i have a seat at the table that i know that, that that doesn't come naturally in all organizations that is that is an easy part i don't have to ask for permission to join i am invited uh, and that sounds fantastic, but I, I think a lot of people uh, struggle with that sort of having that seat at the table and being a granted partner at the table or, or in their organizations. Do you have any any tips or tricks to how to get to that position? It's trust and building relationships. I've always tried to connect on a very both personal but but really engaging level, seeing how I can help and what I can do for them. But I also think coming with a business understanding, and I think that is super important for HR going forward. We really need to understand not, we, we don't need, we shouldn't see the organization or the business that we're helping as our customer because they are not our customers, they are our co-workers. So we really need to understand what, what our real customers are doing and what need they have because then we can support the business and gain the trust that we need in order to have that seat at the table. And I think it's actually lack of maybe business understanding or not really taking an interest in it that it makes the difference and i i think i find that quite quite interesting as well because if you look at other support functions or functions within a company it's rarely you hear finance talking about that the rest of the organization is our internal customer like they they just function as a part of that <laughs> of the yeah. part of the organization but when it comes to hr the narrative uh, for a couple of years at least have been like oh we have these internal customers that it's the managers but is it really and no I, definitely I not on your on your end there as well so it's super interesting to hear any any final thoughts that you think is important to send to the wider hr community now that you now that you had the chance i think that going forward we need in the hr community to to really start discussing how the people organization should be organized and to make sure that we are that valued partner and uh, natural partner to the organization i think that we need to set up a new structure so that we have all the talents from the different sort of subject matter experts that we have in the organization but as we come as one one voice and help uh, and support the business. So I think HR organization and setup will be key going forward. Thank you so much for all of this, Panilla. I'm super Thank thankful you. for your time and for your uh, very concrete uh, sharings as well. I'm super, mm-hmm. super happy about those. Thank you. Thank you.
And if you like this video, make sure you click this one because I think you'd like that as well.